previously on Coruscant Nights. So Park gets onto the, the message boards. Yeah. And types, what does the name Rentha Gregor mean to any of you? And your oldest sibling, your oldest brother, comes up and claps you on the back. So, you going to the big dance tonight? I don't know what you're talking about. So, n- no, I guess? Oh, all right. I just thought, you know, cool kid like you, go to the big dance. Is there really a dance tonight? Yeah. I need a sculpture. It can be anything you want, but it must include this. And he opens up a little box. And inside it is a small crystal. Would I sense anything coming off of it? You feel the dark side radiating from this thing. He gestures at one of his guys. The guy walks up to it and puts his hand near the near the crystal and just around the piece. And he shakes his head. And you can sort of see them through the window. And this guy, Ozum, is, is explaining something. And Sailor doesn't look very happy. So your coworker uses the force? He, he doesn't talk about it much. But yeah, he's got something. I am surprised I have not heard of him. You'd be surprised about a lot of what happens down in the lower levels. I'm pretty sure a lot of people just kind of slip through the cracks down there. Maybe Snoober's been keeping an eye on this, the whole situation, because he he has a close connection to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he would know everything there is, but he would know some stuff. The two of you have this conversation, and uh, basically he dumps a lot of info on you. And our camera's going to fade out while he's talking, and you are learning more about the dims and possible ways that you can attempt to stop them. Oh, goody. This is where they're coming. We need to get out of here. Can we take the book with us? We should take all this stuff. All right, so I just scoop everything, and I take a bag out of my backpack. That's one of the things I had in there, an extra bag. Yep. It's like a reusable grocery bag, except Yeah, it's you take it to the Gungan stuff. Farmer Market. Yeah, I do, yeah. because mm-hmm. I'm responsible. June is, he's actually upstairs at the top of the spiral stairs down to Snoobers. June. And he says, hey, didn't expect you tonight. I didn't expect to be here tonight, June. Uh, Snoober's actually with somebody. Excuse me? Let me see if he can take you right now. He calls on his comlink. Hey, Carp's here with somebody. Do you want me to send her in? Okay. okay. Tell him I've got stuff. Oh, like what kind of stuff? Like stuff. Oh, stuff. Snoober, she's mm-hmm. got stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll send her down. June knows better than to dis- discuss business in the open. Yeah, just head on in. And you head down the spiral staircase to Snoober's cave. I'm fanning myself the whole way. And you open the door, and sitting inside with Snoober is a young woman with dark skin with a little bit of uh, purple tint to it. She's got sort of tendrils coming out of the back of her head. She's a Thalothian. And they both turn and look at you. Just when we think we've got things figured out, new evidence presents itself. Can you make the connections? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coruscant Nights. Tonight, I am joined by two familiar voices. Rill, playing Anames. Hello. And Nikki, playing Carp. Hi. How are you two today? Pretty good. Also good. That's good. So the last time we saw Anames, where was she? She was in Snoober's office discussing right. various things to do with the, trying to track down the dims. Mm-hmm. And Carp had a recent adventure. What mm-hmm. happened there? <laughs> and uh, where is she now? Mark, you asked me to recount something that happened on a prior episode. You know I'm not going to remember. You just listened to the first <laughs> part of it. It didn't trigger any uh, memories. <laughs> Carp and Betty, Betty Maxwell, trusted friend Betty Maxwell, had an adventure on the down ship in it was what was the name of the town huh in Dak Avenue Dak Avenue yeah the ship was named the Manticore the Manticore and I had a run-in with the dims there and have since journeyed back to Snoober's aquarium bar setup 
It's one of those hot aquariums. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> and ran into his what? One of those hot aquariums. Hot aquariums. Is there a specific name for this? Terrarium. Is that? It? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aquarium. Carp- Terrarium. Yeah. Carp would be a little bit more at home in an aquarium. An aquarium. She keeps yeah. trying to pr- convince Stuber to make one. Uh, yeah. I mean, he made that beach that one time. Well, he didn't make it. It just happened to be there. They went They went on a on day Coruscant? trip. Sure. Okay. It's a fake one, obviously. <laughs> It's like, it's like a, okay, Carp calls it a beach. It's more like a water park. Uh Uh-huh. All right. Before we get started, we should roll our destiny points, which you can just, I guess, roll a force die on RPG sessions. We got two light side, two dark side, and two more dark side. All right. So we ended up with four dark side points and two light side points. All right. And... Thanks to Donate for Destiny. I'm going to put a little message here from Sam from the Starbirds podcast and AJ. From the hearts and wallets of the Starbirds podcast and AJ, a member of the Nightcast, we hereby decree that all your destiny points will be dark side. (laughs) Oh no. So. Oh boy. We're in trouble. So we're starting out with eight dark side points. It's for the children. Just remember that when I flip them. This is gonna hurt. (laughs) Carp walks into Snoober's office. Sitting at the desk across from Snoober is a Thalothian. She has dark skin with some little bit of purple at the edges and these sort of hair tendrils on the back of her head. Can you describe for us what Anames looks like? She's petite. She's, I think she, as I said before, she was about, she's about five foot tall. Mm Mm-hmm slender bit on the wiry side she's definitely dressed for business but more business casual yep she just got i don't think she went anywhere after after setting up the sculpture except the jedi temple yeah yeah she did what that's right she did go to the jedi temple yeah she went to the jedi sculpture and then yeah she didn't go back to her studio or anything she had a a talk with her former master Ran into a former friend in the library. Mm-hmm. And Carp walks into Snoober's office, and Snoober's a little bit surprised to see Carp. Carp didn't call ahead or anything, and uh, the people upstairs just said to go on down, and uh, June just let her in. And what does Carp look like as she enters this space? Well, Carp is a Mon Calamari. I have, I would say, like a orangey, brownish, reddish mottled skin pretty tall i don't I'm like i don't i don't know if she's slender i, I feel like she's kind of trunky to be honest wearing I, I have never thought about what she was wearing just yeah, like a, you have I oh yeah exactly i have i drew a picture right of what she's wearing <laughs> kind of like a tunic tunic no. type of thing right nope she's in a black turtleneck oh wait with with a knit cap that's she's right in her spy outfit i'm in my spy outfit how quickly I do forget. <laughs> yes, I'm in my spy outfit, so I'm in like a very flattering black turtleneck <laughs> knit cap. It's still on my head. And false eyelashes, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and right behind Carp is a Kamasi that we all know as Betty. And Snoober looks a little bit surprised. Oh, hey, hey, Carp. Who's who's this, Snoober? Uh, Carp, this is, uh, this is a Namis. Uh, and Anamis was just telling me some stuff about the dims. And you can see on the table in front of them, there are a couple artifacts uh, laid out. Yes, I... Do I recognize them, or... How did they get you, there on the table? You walked in on stuff. You walked in on something you don't really know what's going on. These are... These were apparently put out because Anamis and Snooper are talking about them. Right. You have... They, they uh, match certain... my artifacts or? No. Nope, they don't. Okay. Well, first I kind of eyeball the female intruder in the room, stare down a little bit, look a little taller. Uh, and I sort of, I think Betty actually jumps in and starts to explain <laughs> <laughs> where we've just been and what we have. And I kind of begrudgingly take out the items that we grabbed from the, the ship Okay, so Betty recounts what happened. We... I, I mean, of course, I add in commentary. Mm-hmm. 
Do I sense anything coming from them? Sense anything? Oh, from the artifacts? Yeah, that uh, Kirk just pulled out. Yeah, you would. So Betty introduces herself. Uh, she says, nice to meet you, Anames. My name's Betty. Uh, we just got back from a little expedition on a, on, a, on a ship called the Manticore. Yeah, we were just attacked by the Dims. And uh, not only that, but we found out some interesting stuff. This sh- take out take out the stuff, Carp. <laughs> Carp takes out the stuff. So uh, Carp reaches into her bag and and put, takes out these items and puts them on the table. Uh, there's a book on the cover of it is a symbol that looks like two exploding stars revolving around each other. There is a small red pyramid made out of some sort of glass. A very large dagger with a curved hilt and a blood red gem in it. What looks like a candle made out of glass and a small bronze statue. This ship was in down in the out in the outer, outer rim and collected all this stuff from a planet called uh, what was it? What was it, Carp? It was Sheldwara. <laughs> yeah, we found all this stuff and it, like the uh, the Dims wanted it, and so did this group of clones wearing black armor. But we got out of there just in time. Yes, we did. Snoober, it was a very close call. You have no no idea how cu- close you came to losing your carp. Snoober gets up from the table and takes Carp's hands Aww. and <laughs> and says, you should have told me you were going on this, this, uh, what do you call it? Expedition? Yes. Well, it was, it was all very sudden and I, I really should have come to you, Snoober, but I was afraid you'd make me take June with me. Yeah, I would have. Le- I would. Yeah, June would have gone. He's good. He's getting better. <laughs> I hope so. But Betty's a pretty good shot, so I took Betty. Betty, the retiree. You got all this stuff. What do you think of it, Anamis? Anamis is kind of an expert on stuff. Um. Uh, so, what would I feel? Extremely dark auras from every single item. So, with that. She just gets this look on her face and goes, This is bad. I'm I'm not entirely sure what everything is, but it's bad. I quickly back away from all of it like it's radioactive. <laughs> Do I need to roll anything to see if I recognize what that uh, glass pyramid is? Yeah, let's do you want to do a lore check for everything? Well sure. okay. you could do a lore check. For the glass pyramid alone, I would say an easy check. For everything there, we maybe make it hard. Um, so let's start with my... Let's start with the... You know what? I got all these dark side points. Let's flip one. I was going to say, let's start with just the pyramid. Okay. So that would be against a red? Yep. (laughs) Okay, so I don't recognize it. Okay. Interestingly, the dice results are not showing up on my screen. Uh, no successes, one advantage. Okay. Or rather, a success, a failure, and an advantage. Zero successes, one advantage. It is... Do you have any ideas for the advantage? I do not. Okay. How about it is very similar to a holocron, but normally they're blue, and normally they're cubes. Maybe Anames isn't... Like... Sith holocrons are, are just not familiar to her. Very familiar to the player, but clearly yeah, yeah. not familiar to the character. Yeah. Clearly, Anamis is not an expert on the beginnings of the Republic. And Snoober sees Anamis uh, focusing on the small red pyramid, and uh, he looks down at it and, and says, yeah, I've, I've only ever had one other one of those come through here. Those things are rare. Anamis is I'm not quite sure what it is, but it seems very familiar. Yeah, these things are old, and I, yeah, they're pretty rare. Yeah, I, I'm not in, completely sure what, exactly what it is, but I think perhaps it holds some kind of information? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, I... He looks uh, sheepishly at Carp. I may have sold one of these, uh, like, two months ago, maybe? Oh, snoober to who? Oh, I got a great deal on it, though. I really ripped the guys off who brought it in. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It was the... <laughs> well, at least there's that. You always were a fine businessman, Snooby. Hey, thank you. 
Um, so, uh... I'm kind of staring at it, still not convinced that it's not a paperweight. What do we do with all this stuff? <laughs> what do you usually do with stuff, Snooby? You don't sell this kind of stuff anymore. I don't really know what to do with it. Well, um, where, uh, I had, where is that, that precocious young Jedi that I confronted the Dims with before? Who, Dash? Uh, Dash, I believe his name was. Question. Anamis knows who Dash is, too. I was yeah. gonna say, would she know, would, I know she knows of him from reading the, the report. Would she actually yeah. know him, though? Um, I think she, she doesn't know him, but she knows that he's off world. So I think she could answer that question. Yeah, that he's been he's like missing. I was asking if she would actually have personally known him, considering how old is Desh? Desh is probably in his 20s. And Anamis mid- is also 20. Yeah. So he would only be, what, maybe five years older than her? Yeah. So she may, maybe would have met him as a younger person. That maybe he was like one of the older, one of the older Padawan or younger Padawans helping to teach the younglings at one point. Yeah. The kindergarten teacher. <laughs> the helper, yeah. The teacher's aide. Snoober, did something happen to that young man? She's talking like she's not about the same age, but... Uh, Snoober says, I have no idea. I don't follow the Jedi. And I miss nods. Yeah, he's missing. I wanted to talk to him about what happened with the Dims and uh, I believe his name was Afka, but he's disappeared. Well, that's no good. He's the only Jedi that Cart kind of sort of not trust, but not not trust. Some sort of half trust. As trusty as trusty as she gets. Probably trusts him about as much as she trusts that droid that she reprogrammed. Oh, yeah. Which is, you know, pretty good for her. The key word being for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she's distressed to hear that he's missing. It's kind of weird for a Jedi to go missing, right? Snoober kind of looks around the room. <laughs> Carp has right? no idea if that's normal or not. And he they're, looks they're to always up Anames, because he knows Anames' history a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Very. It's probably, well, it's probably the Dims. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he go missing when he, off world? Yeah, that's correct. But Su- Snoober could like reasonably blame it on just about anything. Yes, we would. Let's say, let's see, we would need probably uh, a new computers check if we don't actually, because I don't remember the results of the last one. If you, how much information you got, but yeah, you could get more information about where he went and the events that sort of followed up the investigation that he, Carp, and June were on with the Dims. Is that a pertinent line of inquiry at the moment? That is totally up to Carp because she would probably be the one doing that line of inquiry. Uh, well, like me talking, I would be like, well, let's just go to the Jedi Temple anyway and see if they know about this stuff. But then it's Carp thinking, okay, the one person she li- not liked but not not liked at the Jedi Temple is not there. Well, this is all info that Anames actually got at the Jedi Temple okay. an hour ago. Well, then I'll do a computer check. So what does Carp do? I whip out my data pad, I guess, mm-hmm. that I yeah. keep with me, and I sort of nose around, nose about some of the, uh, the darker corners of the hollow webs. And okay. let's do a hard check. So three purples, and I'm going to throw a setback on there because uh, this information has been purposefully swept under the rug. Okay. That's the black, right? Yep. Okay. All right. It's rolled. (laughs) I don't know what I rolled, but I rolled something. You rolled zero successes and one advantage. Seriously? So this information has been very successfully swept under the rug. You can't really find anything else about that incident. You know what happened that night with Afka and June and Dash, but you can't find anything about it on, on the holonet. Do you have any idea for your one advantage? Uh, if not, I actually do. Uh, go ahead. What if the advantage is that it's obvious that this was done artificially? That it was not just not put there, but that it was act- like there's signs that it was hidden. Possibly who did it. 
or something that could be an initial point or two. Well, I mean, I was thinking maybe there could be a clue left behind. How about? I guess I, I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, is our only option Desh right now or? No, I'm going to open things up. (laughs) I I got an idea for your, your advantage. So looking through the holonet, trying to find something, you don't really find anything related to Desh or Afka or anything that happened that night. You remember that there was a senator there. And in searching for that senator, whose name was Vane, Mm V-A-N-E, you spot that he was pardoned by the chancellor within 24 hours. Unsurprising. Somebody misspelled his name. They uh, spelled it with an I instead of uh, V-A-N-E. Vine. Um, yeah. And you you spot something about him being pardoned for the events that took place the previous night. It's just a, a tiny little article uh, about this guy. Yeah. Does that work for your advantage? Yes. I'm, in, I'm impressed anything was written at all, to be honest considering clones were involved. But yeah. So I, I you didn't say that out loud, did you? <laughs> did I not? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she just thinks it. It's it's such an obvious thing to her that it, it doesn't always need to be said. She just assumes that everyone else would think that way too. <laughs> so Snoober is sitting at his desk, kind of looking at the stuff that you brought back from the Manticore, playing with the, the big dagger that you grabbed and he taps his taps his uh temple with the tip of it and says you know vane can you figure out where he was from i do a little bit of tippity tapping on my my data pad do i have let's to get an, uh, yeah i want another roll okay we're gonna make it easy though because he's a senator yeah and there should, find... i should be able to get him like on star wars wikipedia yeah yeah there's gonna be a lot of information about him besides that uh, incident. Okay, can I, I add some blue dice then? Why? Because it's that obvious and <laughs> that uh, easy. No, it's going to be one purple because it's that obvious, but if you have other ideas for boosts, we can do them. Well, I mean, aside from very broad searches, I'm good at computers and know how to dig up a little extra information that might not be on official profiles. I think that is evident in your two yellows. Yeah. In computers. Message boards. <laughs> I, I also search for him on the message boards. I'll give you a boost and I'm going to flip one over. So you're rolling one red. You're rolling your computers with one blue and against one red. I don't know why I should have a red die if it's that easy. Because I flipped a dark side point because things could go wrong. All right. Well, there you go. Four successes, one advantage and a triumph. Oh, cool. So you know that this guy is a senator from Bonadan. You know what he looks like. You've got a picture of him. He's uh, very sinister looking. He's got a tall black collar and a pointy beard. <laughs> Typical what do you senator wanna... get up. Uh-huh. What do you want to do with your one advantage? And what do you want to do with your triumph? So uh, I, I'd like to clarify the line of thinking right now. So I'm looking this guy up. And you're looking this guy up because you started looking for Dash. info on Dash. You ended up finding this guy's name. Okay. And then Snoober asked if you knew where he was from. I, he's from Bonna. Bonna Dan. Dan. <laughs> I kept wanting to say Bonna <laughs> He's from Bonna Dan, Snoopy. Huh. Does that ring any bells for me then what would i need to roll to find out i don't think it does but with that triumph it could ring some bells for snooper it does it rings all the bells loudly bonadan huh there was another incident with uh with a guy from bonadan after that whole thing uh with you and afka and and desh i started paying attention to, to what was going on and i didn't sell anything to this guy but Somebody came in. I don't remember what his name was. Uh, I think he was very handsome for a human. But I know that he was from Bonadan. I do remember that much. He was looking for some... uh, And he he sort of gives like a... a, He he puts a hand to the side of his face and he like like he's telling you a secret. He was looking for some kyber crystals. I didn't have any. So I sent him away. 
What about the f food dye that they used to make the purple ones? <laughs> keep telling you. I keep telling you, Carp. You know, Snoober, <laughs> Snoober fronts like he t conducts all of his business in person, but I'm betting you half of it's like on eBay or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's just an eBay salesman with connections. Anamis look, looks at him and goes, Kyber crystals. What? I need to know more about what he- Like I said, pretty sure he was very handsome. He had uh, dark hair, he had kind of a scruffy beard, maybe early 30s? I can never really tell with humans. I show him, I flip my data pad around and show him the picture of Senator Vane. Oh, no, it wasn't that guy. Okay. <laughs> that guy's scary. Sure. <laughs> Sometimes humans kind of look alike to carp, <laughs> so I really wanted to make sure. Does the description sound familiar to Anamis? No, uh, it doesn't sound like Dr. Sanlev. What about one of Sanlev's uh, men? That's a good question. They were both human, weren't they? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I don't think it would sound like either of them. Okay. So, okay, so this guy came in, and then he came up again. This is why I know he's from Bonadam, because uh, there was another article. I'm pretty sure that if you looked it up, you wouldn't find anything about it. They caught him and a bunch of other guys doing weird stuff in a water treatment plant in the Undercity. And, uh... Oh, don't uh, say it. Afka says he was there, too. Is this about the night that he was almost stabbed and dropped into a pool of acid or whatever they were going to do to him? No, that was like a week later. And that okay. wasn't acid. That was, like, uh, Dathomir stuff. I'm pretty sure it was acid. Sure, okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue this with you. <laughs> Snoo Snoober knows how to keep the relationship a success. So, uh, how do we... Uh, so, I, um... I do... <laughs> I do that thing where you can do an image search on Google. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no. We don't have an image of this guy. No, you don't. You only have the senator. I would think that Snoober... That was a total lapse of security. You used to take pictures of all your clients for blackmail uh, purposes. Or do you still... We and don't might. tell me. I, you know, it's not for blackmail. It's for security. But I have June wipe the tapes pretty regularly. So unless he's doing a bad job again, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is very possible. What about... Maybe you should look up a, doc, a Dr. Selyar Sandlov? I clickety-clack on the data pad. <laughs> Wait, do I have to do another check? Yeah, you do. How deep do you want to go? the deepest as deep as it can be okay um bottom level of coruscant deep i'm flipping a dark side point over so it's going to be a red and two purples a red and two purples okay four successes and one threat dr selyar sanlev of the damask cancer cancer institute is very very high up on the coruscant like movers and shakers list so <laughs> Yeah. He definitely has some threads dedicated to him on the message boards then. He does, and interestingly enough, they cross over with a few senators, uh, including somebody named Yander Rosnick, who is- Possibly all clones of each other. Currently missing, Senator Vane, and Ol Skasborg. That last one was my addition. I've secretly thought that he's actually a senator for the Republic, Ol which Skazborg? is why I've been investigating him. Yes! The I know he's the, the Bigfoot, but Big he's Foot? also a yes. He might also be a senator. <laughs> the Coruscant Bigfoot that is a, a cross between multi many multiple species of animal. Yes, the Republic created him to be a senator. Okay. What part of this are you not understanding? It's very clear to Carp. <laughs> Basically, you get the idea that Senator Rosnick, Selyar Sanlev, and Senator Vane are all high-level dims. Rosnick has been missing for a couple days since the Battle of Coruscant. Nobody knows what's happened to him. Vane is still a senator. He is minus one arm, thanks to Desh. <laughs> and Selyar Sanlev, he... Uh, he's just like a creepy guy. He's popping up in a lot of photos with, with very important people. And what other information were you looking for on him? He hits on his interns. Oh, um... <laughs> it's possible. 
He's, he said he was creepy. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my mind automatically goes. You find a ridiculous amount of not financial scandals, like more, less dirt on this guy exists than should exist. And that in itself is suspicious. Right, that is very suspicious to people on the message boards. That is what is seemingly connecting him to a lot of the other higher-ups in Coruscant, is that they seem to be all covering for each other. It's the way things have always been. What else? Was there anything else that you were looking for on this guy? What uh, was what was Anames looking for when asking yeah. Carp to look him up? She was mostly suggesting it because she knows he's got a connection to the Dims, and that we didn't have any other leads, so... Yeah, she had previously connected to him to another senator called Senator Sinlon from da Daxum 4. I find all of that. Sure. I'm that triumphant. So while you're doing that, Snoober has called June in and is having a conversation on the other side of the room. Hey, June, did you, uh... I, I know that we talk about you erasing the tapes weekly, and <laughs> I know, I know that you don't always remember to do it. I'm not gonna reprimand you if you didn't do it recently, but when was the last time you erased the tapes? Okay, for a black market dealer, Snoober is awfully good employer to his employees. Yeah, he is. Like a paternal figure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to flip a light side point so that he hasn't erased the tapes in, in a month? Will it show anything pertinent to sort of tell us where to go next? It probably will. All right, fine. <laughs> and you also got I didn't that... think we had any light side you've points. A, you have three light side... You have, now have two light side points. Okay. I'm also going to spend that threat to help out here, too. So June says... Um, and he looks a little shifty. <laughs> you, I, I cross my arms. I, yeah, I forgot. Uh, if you want to come upstairs, I, we can go through. What were you looking for? Uh, do you, you don't remember, you don't remember these things. There was a guy like a month ago who was looking for some kyber crystals. I, I, don't even worry about it. I'm going to take care of this. You go guard something. Uh, and, and <laughs> go June, guard something. June walks off and Sumer says, all right, let's, uh, let's head up to June's office and we can look at the security footage. We all so, trot off. Yeah, the three yep. of you, uh, the four of you leave Snoober's office, Betty walking behind the group. And as you do, you hear a little ping on your data pad from the message boards. And Snoober, They just mm -hmm. keep me up all night. Snoober leads the group of you into uh, June's office, which Anamis has been in before. It is a broom closet behind the bar with a couple monitors set up. And... Snoober starts uh, scrubbing through the footage to try and find this guy. Do you want to check the message boards? Yes, I do. I, I um, check my messages uh, to see what I've been sent. You got something from Neelig99. Really? I pop it open. Um, so Neelig99... White Snake. Neelig99, who you like to call <laughs> White Snake, um, has sent you a, another very simple message that says get out now oh dear oh dear i kind of <laughs> i kind i kind of do that thing where i sort of like flap my hands around and panic for a moment <laughs> snooby snooby i just received a message that we must get out and it's from the same person who told me about this ship but i'm looking for the footage i thought we needed this footage it said get out now <laughs> Not get out in five minutes. We have to go. Uh, get out of where? Get out of here. Get away from this terrarium. <laughs> we have to go. Betty says, if you got to go, you got to go. I'm going to stay with Snooper and we'll find the footage. We'll give you a call if we find something. Oh, Betty, you're so brave. From the lo- And Anamis looks at her and gets those. From the location or from what you were doing or- I flip the data pad around and just show her the message. This is this source has uh, given me confidential information before. We have to leave. At least I have to leave. He didn't message you. He messaged me. So I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> but okay. She just stares like she, just this look of utter confusion. At the same time, Carp is kind of exhilarated. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is what Carp lives for is the conspiracy, <laughs> the conspiracy action. And I just sort of scoot out. Snooper is pretty used to Carp getting random messages that say get out and then Carp just <laughs> running. Uh, oh you didn't tell me I've gotten these before. I just so assume okay. that you get them from Afka every once in a while. I, so at first when Afka used to send me these, I would just dive under the nearest table until I, I realized to ignore most of his messages. But from this person, I take it seriously. So yeah, he continues scrubbing through the footage and Betty says, do you both have blasters? I can, I can give you mine if you need. I, I've got two. I have one, yes. Okay, you just I give mean, us a call if you need any help. We can be your people behind the computer. Did you say that wanting me to take her blaster? What kind of blaster does she have? It's very similar to yours. Oh, okay, never mind. No, Betty, I'm all set on the armory front. And I, um, before I turn around, <laughs> I give her like a really sappy hug. Because we've just been through a lot together just yeah, now. Yeah, you have. And she and <laughs> reciprocates, I, I'm but way also too dramatic says, about it. What the, uh, what the heck are you waiting for? This, this is a reliable source. You better get out. And so I, I sort of very clumsily start running out. You exit that broom closet, leaving Anamis behind? Well, I don't know yet to take her with me. and I think Anamis has to follow me. And I'm not sure whether Anamis would right now, mostly because, wait, but we need this info. What? I mean, I, that wasn't about me. So are you curious enough to follow me? The question is, which would she be more curious about? You? Or who is it that one of those was asking about kyber crystals? Considering she just got one and had to give it back to the good doctor. I'm going to flip a dark side point. Okay. <laughs> so you are in this little booth this sort of like security booth and there are a few monitors here in addition to a mop and um some cleaning chemicals and on i love a mop mm -hmm, on the screen uh above and to the left it looks out on the outside of snoobers and you see like in front of his bar the street in f the the street that's on the screen is illuminated by the the neon from uh, his sign with its twin sons and you see three people approaching the front of this place all wearing dark cloaks with hoods that cover their heads and faces they really need a new team uniform <laughs> <laughs> so as you are leaving this little security booth you spot these people on a security cam on security cam footage Oh, I'm sorry. They yeah. are approaching I think the, the audio building. Cut out. They are approaching the building right now and are outside. Oh, okay. No. All right. So I see the camera footage. Yes. Do from the I front. see them? Oh, I think. Yeah, I think you do. I get. I got to get out of here. They're after me. With the I dark know side too much. Flip. Snoober is too busy to actually notice this as well. I'm gonna have a talk with Snoober about that later. So you say I... that they're after you and then start to leave. Yes. Okay. Back way. Back way. And you said I do see this uh -huh. as well? Yep. I'm going to follow her right then. Okay. Because... Well, now I'm interesting to you. <sighs> really? That's what you think this is about? I mean, it's it's never a good sign when guys in cloaks show up. I just I just know to, to go the other direction by this point. I'm not worried about men in cloaks. I'm worried about men in dark cloaks. <laughs> are, the, are the cloaks dark, Mark? They're, they're dark, yeah. Super dark. Mm-hmm. As dark right. as it gets. <laughs> it's to match their souls. All right, so I, I'm i pounding. I'm kind of trying to sneak out the back then. Okay, so the two of you exit this room. Betty said that she was going to send any information they find to you when they find it. You want to describe what the, the back exit to this place is? And also First I would like a group stealth check to get, it out, get out before uh, these guys see you. Yes, first of all, I would like to, just for the sake of being a good girlfriend and a good friend, should I mean, I feel like I should be reasonably sure that they're not after Betty and Snoober, too. Like, How the, do you want to just... make sure of that? Wait and see? Oh. 
like staying might endanger them, but leaving may not draw them away. How how what would be a good way of checking on that? Do you have any ideas? <laughs> Who are you asking? I couldn't like anyone. The room at large. Could I like <laughs> I could do like one of those funhouse mirror tricks where they think they see me and I'm not there. You could duck around a corner and try and listen in on whatever oh, yeah, yeah. they say. I do that. Okay. So you exit this little booth and duck around the corner that leads to Snoober's office. Does Aname's follow? Yes. Okay, so you how, duck around how that corner. How does Aname's sneak? What what does your sneaking look like? Because we've I've described before how my sneaking looks like. What does your sneaking look like? My sneaking looks a lot like trying as if she's trying to bl- become part of the walls. Um, it's like smooth. I wouldn't say necessarily very slow, but you know a little slower than usual because she's making sure she's not being loud and she's definitely trying. Yeah, she's taking advantage of her color and her size to try and blend in with any shadows in the area. And Carp's uh, sneaking is extremely exaggerated <laughs> and comic. Is that Kronk right? from Emperor's New Groove, yes. I have used that reference before. You press yourself up against the wall, put your arms straight on out on the other side, and <laughs> start sidling. Song. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And right. somehow it works. <laughs> somehow. I'm not uh, rolling for that. I'm just saying it works. You have the better stealth. I, I do I? You do. Yes, I only have two green. You have. Do uh, I have to roll? Yeah, to you have see to roll. if I can get up close. Yep. Okay. You are going to get a boost because you're around <laughs> the corner, and it's going to be against one purple. Oh, you're being easy on me. Dims aren't particularly observant. Two They're successes. Not smart. They're three slightly advantages. dim. They're a little dim. <laughs> so you both sneak around this corner and you hear the front door of Snoober's open and you feel a little gust of cold air from outside come in. And just out of the corner of uh, your vision, because you're sort of around this corner and you can't really see what's happening, you, these three people, uh, two of them sort of uh, fan off to the sides and one of them approaches the bar uh, where a Twi'lek is serving drinks. And the one who approaches the bar says, have you seen these people? And you see them hold up a data pad. And I would like a perception check from Anames. Average difficulty, please. All right. Three successes, one threat. Okay. Um, you've heard this voice before. It is Evan, who works for Seliar Sanlev. Uh, that's the one that's not force sensitive though if I recall correctly correct yep the Twi'lek responds I have never seen either of those two people in my life I would like to mention that the Twi'lek gets asked this about Carp like once a month Mm -hmm. he knows the standard response someone weird is always asking would you like a drink is he asking me or the dim he's asking the dim Yes. There's, there's a whole conversation happening. Well, it's it's sort of a one-sided conversation where uh, the Twi'lek is talking and the Dim is not liking the answers that he's getting. Anamis actually goes a bit pale when she recognizes that voice because she knows that person. This is true. Uh, goes, yeah, we need to go. Okay, I'm I'm ready to go. I know him. Okay, I, I uh, how do you... Okay, well, we'll... S- I, I'm whispering this. We'll sneak out the back. I know, follow me. I, I know the way out. And I sort of turn and crab walk, <laughs> like, to a side hallway, down the side hallway, away from their vision. Oh, and a Snoober, and I don't have to flip a point for this because Snoober is probably established as a security guy and would reasonably have an undisclosed exit. Yeah. So he has an undisclosed exit, and you you pass June running up the stairs uh, <laughs> on I, your way down. I just kind of glare at him. And he, like, gestures, uh, get going. Uh, he doesn't say anything to you, though, as he gets, uh, he, he has a hand on his blaster as he rounds the corner into the bar. 
What is the can... what is the back exit of Snoober's look like? It's clearly downstairs, so it's actually on a different level than the Blacklight District. And where does it lead? It um so the exit is actually behind a a large hollow painting of Snoopy's great grand lizard <laughs> and you have to sort of push a little switch on the side of the frame and it'll swing open wait do you have to um tug on the horn of the great dragon skull behind his desk yes yeah yeah, I'll, yeah and if you do it out of order it knows that you're like you're that you're breaking in because only there's a kill switch Great. You know. And that painting opens up, <laughs> sure, into a small hallway. <laughs> it makes more sense if you think that this was all installed at Carp's insistence. Oh yeah, this was all post <laughs> getting back together with Carp. This was our one year anniversary present to me. Okay, so it was pre getting back together with Carp. Oh oh, this has been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, because he you, he you only secretly. Got back- he you secretly got... always hoped I'd sneak back in. Uh-huh. Yeah. You only got back with Snoober maybe like a month and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. So you go out through this secret exit and down some stairs and end up in another level. We have a screen wipe and you end up in this abandoned alley. Yes. And the fact that he yes. never changed the combination means that he always wanted me back. <laughs> but uh, it opens up behind like in an an alley that's sort of out of the way, I guess, of a line of sight. Yeah, and it's one of those alleys that normally would be pretty dark, but there's a lot of holo graffiti. Some of it might look in a familiar style. Oh, yeah? Well, it's not like anyone really cares cares down here, and uh, she needs practice sometimes. Oh, are you practicing your holo graffiti calligraphy? No calligraphy, just holographity. So yeah, you come out on a place that uh, Anami recognizes as uh, a somewhat abandoned area um, where you can get away with uh, some minor artistic crimes. Yeah. My suspicion is it's probably an area that's at least largely abandoned, hence why all the young adults and teens come down there to tag it. Yeah, and smoke their death sticks. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there might be some smoking of death sticks, but it's more just, hey, let's go tag a building. No one cares mm-hmm. about this because nobody owns it. Yeah. Is there a... Sometimes on Coruscant, there's ways of peeking up at the level above you. I'm sure that close by there is one of those sort of canyon streets that you might be able to mm-hmm. see something about uh, of the level above. Yeah. So I kind of thread my way over there and just to just to get a little sneaky look at and see whether I can spot them coming back out of the front entrance. Okay. You don't see them out there when you look. Yeah. They huh? I don't think enough time has passed for them to actually leave yet if they're going to leave. <laughs> they're just going to have a few drinks. Well, June did head up there with his hand on his blaster. <laughs> oh, great. And now I'm <laughs> consumed with First of all, he can't hit a target on the broad side of a barn. That's what and you second, say. <laughs> and secondly, I, uh, I'm worried that it's going to turn into a firefight that it might not have been otherwise. My, my Snoopy's in there and Betty. And Snoopy's pretty protective and Betty's already taken out three dims tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She, <laughs> she's operating on bloodlust now. Mm-hmm. It beats Pilates. <laughs> So what kind of leads do you have? What, wh- okay. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You know some stuff about the dims. You know some of maybe what they're looking for, but probably don't have the full story. Mm-hmm. Shoot, we didn't take anything with us. Uh, Anamis, do you have any... Can you think of what to do? Well... This isn't really my area of expertise. Of Well, I mean, I, I guess... Uh, Message one boards. of those, one of those dims works for Doctor Sandlev. Should we go track track this guy down? One of the many clones on Coruscant. Clonasant, am I right? What? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you don't know Carp well enough yet to know that she just assumes everyone's a clone. No, he is not a clone. He's, I guess, the closest you could describe it is 
The doctor's private security. Well, maybe maybe we should track down this doctor, because I'm getting real tired of these guys busting up my dates with Snoopy. Well, I do know where the doctor lives. Oh, well, you were let's... there a couple hours ago. Exactly. Let's case this joint. Are they were they even here for me or are they here for you? I'm that he said several people, so maybe both. All right. It looks it looks like we're getting dragged into another adventure. She says to herself. <laughs> <laughs> The royal we. <laughs> the royal we. We shall sally on. All right, so let's let's get on to it. it uh, do I? We took Betty's convertible, right? To you did. Betty and I. She probably has the keys. <laughs> Can I hotwire? <laughs> I'm flipping the dark side point. She has the well, keys. Except, would Betty's convertible be down in the abandoned alley? No, it'd be on the level above. No, we'd That's have to loop back thought. around and go back up a level. Risk Come running into behind. those people. Yeah. All right. So where does this guy live? This he doctor. Li he lives on the upper levels. He lives in Sereno Heights. It's one of the, the largest tower in Sereno Heights. And he lives in, wasn't it the penthouse? Yeah. Wait. And Carp would be aware that that is where Betty lives and where her airstream is. Yes. Dang it. The ritzy neighborhood. Well, I'm not, I don't. I don't really think I need to go back for the airstream right now. It might backfire at the wrong moment, <laughs> but I do Just think we need to go. Just giving you the opportunity to use your piloting planetary skill. <laughs> That's all. It's as much as I love the airstream. It's not the stealthiest vehicle, but we do need to get to this place in Serrano Heights. Is there any way? <laughs> is, are we going to have to be calling a taxi? You might have to call a taxi unless you want to walk. All right. I I. Hail a cab, but the one, the, the convertible one, I wave on. <laughs> Carp and Aname head to the uh, big avenue that the Blacklight District is on, and they hail a cab. They pass up on the first one, a blue convertible driven by a Keldor, and grab the second one, a green cab with a roof that is being <laughs> driven currently by a Wookiee. Perfect. I hop in and say, is there like an, is Sereno Heights an entire level? Sereno Heights is, uh, it's more of, it's more than one level because I mean, it's got some re really tall buildings. It's like the, the upper levels Okay. with some nicer apartments and homes. It's mostly homes and apartments. Anam Anamai's told me the address, correct? Yep. Anamai's told you the address. You give it to the cab driver. No, 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 we don't give that address. We give an address nearby. <laughs> we don't just roll up to a possible dim in our taxi. Okay, you give a close by addre address, and the Wookiee yes. says, <laughs> and the speeder speeds off, and we have a screen wipe. Park's flying through the city as fast as he can, ready to do what he does best go to a dance oh is he going to the dance i don't know is he going to a dance i mean like he doesn't really have like character driven motivation to go to the dance right he doesn't have like a date uh or even like a friend <laughs> at the school okay park is uh flying through the city on his hoverboard he's where where is he headed i think he wants to go to the dance okay so he's gonna head towards uh the dance so he's heading towards his high school, and uh, he hears Afka in his ear. Yeah, Afka just got home and got connected to Park's comlink. What high school did you say you went to again? I, I, I go to Little Wandering High. You know, the, the place that looks like a, a giant egg? Yeah. Um, what year are you in? Uh, second to last. So there's a senior there. Do you know? Don't say it. Addie Gregor? Oh, I thought you were going to say Dash. Who's Dash? Don't worry about it. Um, Eddie Gregor. Eddie, with an arc? You know, first letter in Orabesh. Eddie Gregor. Rent the Gregor's kid is in your class. Well, one class above above you. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a really big school, uh, Afka. And no, I, I don't know them. Okay. Um, but, uh... You think they've got some info? What am I supposed to do? I don't know. They might be at the dance. Yeah, you I, I do I, your I... night cat stuff or whatever it is you are. You're called. 
Apparently not the Ragazak. You can call me whatever you want. We're, I'm just trying to see what sticks at this point. Do you think they've got info? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, why would you? Well, I was gonna drop by anyway, trying to, you know, trying to save the world, but I'd like to give some part of my childhood, uh, my early adolescence, uh, at least a few minutes of attention. Um, well, I'm gonna stop by anyway, so maybe I can sneak in a few questions as nonchalantly as possible. You get to your school, the giant egg in the middle of Little Onderon. Is is the dance at the high school? Yeah, it's at the high school. It's in the gymnasium. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, yeah. actually, it's in the gy- gymnasium, which is the top floor, the dome on top of the egg. This sounds kind of awesome. Yeah, like the opposite of having a gymnasium dance. Yeah, uh, having all, all high school dances should be like on the football field. That sounds way more fun. Yeah. So uh, he heads up the lift to the top floor. There are teachers uh, dressed like, you know, in their casual, what is it? It's like, I'm just picturing those, uh, those like fleece sweaters with the high collar, you know, with the little zip. Yeah, it's, it's just called a fleece. Yeah, it's just called a fleece. Uh-huh. The Star Wars version of that with the Star Wars version of pleated jeans, just like standing around chaperoning. I think one of them's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's just like dancing a little. Uh, th- you're not even at the dance yet. You're still like downstairs getting in the lift to go all the way up. Uh huh. Because, you know, they got to like cordon off the rest of the school. You're not allowed to go in the rest of the school. You can only go in the gym. Yeah. Well, Park's, Park's, Park's seen it. It's not for him anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who needs the rest of the school? So you crowd into the elevator with the. Uh, couple kids you're a little bit late so uh it's less people coming in than than it would have been earlier Mm -hmm. and you head up to the field on top they got the clone course put away uh they've uh i think i actually think that this field flips oh my this is a nice school it's like little Andron tech it's it's for the it's for the smart smarter kids yeah, so it's a nice school. The what is the other side of the field? I think that the other side of the field is um hmm. is it like laminate wood? That was my first inkling. Like a basketball court? That was what I was imagining. Yeah. But the, I was trying to think practically about like what would the other side be in a Star Wars universe? Yeah. Um, so Dura wood. Yeah, I think okay. I think it's Duro wood, and there are bleachers. Yeah, different sports that, are done on like on this surface. It's, you know, it's more of an indoor surface. Yeah, I actually think the bleacher part doesn't flip. Like there are always bleachers around the edges. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, this is the bowl of ball court. All right. They brought in the the DJ with their big speakers. They are a human with sort of long hair, and a like neon glowy outfit blasting some tunes and there are hundreds of of kids on the da- dance floor it's, it's it's not little beast pen no it's dj mystique okay that's what i thought actually yeah but i couldn't remember beast pen's an ugnot yeah yeah so music is loud it's uh dark except for some flashing lights and there are tons of people here after yeah. in your ear like that it's too loud i gotta i gotta just signal me if you need something. I gotta mute you. All right, sounds good, Afka. I um, okay. Can you? Uh, I'm looking for uh, Eddie Gregor, right? Yeah. Can talking to be... me or talking to Afka? What's that? Are you talking to me or are you talking to Afka? Oh, I was talking to Afka. <laughs> oh, okay. Before you, before you mute me, um, I'm looking for Eddie Gregor, Afka. Correct. Right. Yep. Can you give me like some kind of profile? somewhere to look yeah 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 you hear some distant typing uh he's uh human um about six foot uh year older than you dark hair he's uh i don't know i don't know what is attractive for humans i think he's he's like he's got a i don't know he looks like kind of like someone you'd see on heights and depths well of course i've never seen heights and depths so that's gonna be pretty hard for me, Afka, but I'll do my best. Alright, thank you. You can uh you can mute this 
this loud music. You hear a little in your ear. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to use. I'm going to use seek. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. So what is that like? A very hard perception check. No, it's a. It's just your force die and hope for two light side or two dark side pips. Mm. And I just get to roll one. Mm-hmm. Yep. You only have a force rating of one. So. Yeah. Would it otherwise be like a daunting perception check? It, it would be some time and perception, probably. Okay. I'm going to roll force die. I'm going to see what happens. Oh, I I finally understand how I was misreading my seek, seek talent. Yeah, your seek talent is multiple talents, really. But I understand I need to roll two light side for it to succeed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't understand that before. Good. I rolled one dark side. <laughs> yep, that's the usual. We've had three characters take Seek so far, and I think only one has successfully used that portion of the power. And it might okay. have been you. No, it was uh, Meryl, I think. Okay, so you start looking around, and there are a lot of people. Some of them are big, some of them are small. It's kind of dark in here as well, so it's kind of hard to make out any individual you do spot Dash. He is definitely here. Uh, unmistakable. He's got a crowd of people around him, as usual. He does not spot you. Yeah, let's keep it that way, Dash. Enjoy your evening. Except what sort of... Uh, what? Park's like, Dash probably knows the guy I'm trying to find. <laughs> he probably does. Uh, it's hard to weigh whether it's worth it worth the worth the the banter you know what Th this is the thing i'm noticing in in games if i bring it up i like have to do it <laughs> do you don't don't spend too much time weighing the consequences okay do it okay i'm gonna go up to dash so you like uh break through the crowd around him yeah i'm gonna try and do so in the most polite way possible which is pretty hard for park yeah, uh, based uh, on their, his past relationships with these people. As you approach, he's got his uh, his arm around someone, and he starts laughing, and everybody around him starts laughing along. And of course, Park goes, <laughs> "Yeah, that's good. That's good." <laughs> and he looks down at you because he's a little. I think he's a little taller than you. Yeah, not much. Park's Park's tall ish. I guess. I think you I have was... him at, at six foot. Yeah, I guess I kind of. I was just kind of. That is that is holder. that with the ears? What's that? Is that yeah, with ears, that including with the ears? ears. And his okay. ears are about two inches. Yeah, so he's probably actually about five nine. Yeah, good one, Dash. Everybody having fun? What do you want, Park? Just here to enjoy the dance with my friends. Why? Uh, why wouldn't I come to a dance like this with a billion people? I don't know. And Dash looks uh, looks at the people he's hanging out with. I don't see any of your friends here. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm looking for one of them actually. I mean, it's a huge dance. Where do I even begin? They could be uh, this building. They could be half a mile away from me right now. You know what I mean? Uh, you've seen uh, Addy, right? He's probably Who? here. Gregor. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. What do you want with that guy? We're supposed to meet up. We got we got things to do. We got other people to meet. A stuck up rich kid. I mean, you know, I, I don't know him too well. I'm not going to let your opinion sway mine, but not that I don't respect your opinion, Dash. What kind of uh, social check do you want to do here? Whichever one I'm best at. Um, deception. You're only good at deception. Yeah. This is I guess that deceiving... fits. You're lying to him, pretending yeah. he's your friend. Yeah. I'm c convincing him that we're, we're cool. Yeah. Dash is kind of a dummy, so it's just going to be one purple, but oh. he also doesn't like you, so it's going to be a setback on there. Okay, I'm gonna flip. Okay. I'm gonna keep flipping. So I'm gonna roll two yellow. Okay. I think that flip is that he also doesn't like Addy Gregor, so he figures that the two of you probably do know each other because he doesn't like either of you. Cool. Well, I succeeded. Okay. Three successes and one threat. Okay. He says, uh, I think I saw him on the, the back side of the DJ's booth get out of here oh well it was lovely to see you as well dash um enjoy your night it's like you're gonna have a lovely time with these other lovely people 
and uh, see you around Monday. Bye. You start walking away, and you don't hear what he says, but everybody in the group starts laughing. Ah, lovely. I knew that it would be good for me to come to this dance and just just feel normal and you know well adjusted. It's, uh, it's everything I could have imagined. So anyway, uh, so yeah, I think you know. Uh, that being said, I think Park is a pretty self confident person. He doesn't need these people's approval. As you start walking, you hear the in your ear. Hey, do you have your data pad on you? I sure do. What can I? What do you got for me? Uh, I found a picture. I'm sending it over your way. Okay. And you get a little bing on your data pad that you can't hear because it's too loud. And you get a picture of Eddie Gregor. Ah. Okay. This is helpful. Uh, this like narratively doesn't work, but I really want that moment where he's like holding the data pad directly in front of him <laughs> and he like lowers it, and Eddie Gregor's like you know filling the uh the image left behind yeah no we're gonna do that okay and uh as you lower it you see him walking towards you and he starts to push by you and says excuse me oh uh, sorry pardon me okay i we we've just like bumped into each other yeah he's trying to get past you at this point it's crowded though so it's kind of kind of tough he's got to sort of sidle by you Hmm. What can I do to get him to stop and talk to me for a moment? Aside from being like, hey, I don't have skullduggery. I might not be able to do anything interesting. Uh, what could you do with stealth? Yeah, I was thinking about that. You've probably played enough games where you're like, I stealthily do skullduggery. Hmm. I stealthily grab something out of their pocket with skullduggery. I would probably allow it. Uh, um, but also, Skullduggery, you are in a huge crowd. You could argue for boosts and stuff. Fair enough. Let's just do Skullduggery so we're not okay. bending the rules too much. Uh, uh, it's going to be an average check. What are you going for? Um, I think he probably pretty well dressed. He's probably got a, a big flower. <laughs> I'm going to grab it. You want to grab his big flower? Why? So I can be like, the heck, dude! You just you just run, bump by me, and you uh, this thing stuck to my jacket. <laughs> uh, so what do you want with him? You want to ask him questions? Yeah, I guess the, the because smart... I mean, you, you could like try and palm his comm link or something, and then get Afka to hack it or something. Um. Yeah, I get. I get it. That that that's gonna be a smarter move. So I don't really need to talk to this guy, is what you're that, saying. That's up to you. I mean, he's this person's kid, so he would know some stuff about her. You might be able to get some more information out of him, but being the person he is, which is sort of a rich, snobby guy, you might not get much out of him. I think for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and stealthily grab his calm. Okay. I'll allow it. Okay, my stealth is actually, oh, I guess not, I guess it's, it's pretty good. It's very good. Um, since you're in a big crowd, you can have a boost. Uh, it's going to be an average check. Okay. Do you have, you have sleight of mind? Yes, I have sleight of mind. That adds a boost, right? Yes. Yeah, I rolled really, really well. I rolled, well pretty well i rolled two successes and three advantages okay so he starts to push by you uh rudely saying excuse me what do you uh, what does park do uh, pardon me by all means after you sir and he so the two of you are sort of like shuffling by each other mm -hmm. i think park kind of pretends like he's um paying no attention to this guy at all and reaches into the pocket of his jacket and grabs his comm. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, it's a nice comm link. It's like a Meilu Run 10, the newest, newest model. And he palms it, puts it in his hand, hides it, and uh, Gregor doesn't notice a thing. Um, I think even while we're at the dance, uh, I think that 
park is going to kind of head around behind the um, DJ. Mm -hmm. And can I like um, plug the common to my yep. um, to my data pad? Sure. You've got those three advantages. So maybe the um, what's the word? It's got a little port in it and you've got the right cord to plug it into your data pad. Hey, uh, Afka, I'm uh, sending you some info. Tell me if you could find anything interesting. This is from this is from AD Gregor. Yeah, you hear Afka in your ear. Yeah, I'm getting it. This is this is good stuff. I think I should be able to do some do some things with this. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna flip for this. I'm getting some weird comm traffic uh, on secure channels. You might want to get out of there. And you get to dance. Yeah, oh, fair enough, Afka. I don't know what it's about. It's but uh, it seems like RSF's coming to pick someone up. RSF. Hmm. Uh, any any leads on who they're picking up? No, they're they're talking in code. I don't know. Okay, I guess I'm gonna leave. Uh, I'll be in contact in a few. And got it. Park uh, gets up and just as nonchalantly as possible, it's gonna try and head for the lift. Mm -hmm. So you get into the lift and uh, it it comes up just as you get into it, just as you get to it, and uh, you actually get in there with. Addie Gregor and two other people, one of them the teacher, and it's a long, awkward ride down. Mm, you guys uh, join the the dance. What what species is the teacher? Um, they're 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 Godel. Oh, they're a Godel. Do you have the teacher for any classes? Maybe you had the teacher like last year. Yeah, it's uh, Mr. Fig Switch. Yeah, Mr. Fig Switch. Hey, Mr. Fig Switch. Uh, Fig Switch. <laughs> oh hey Park. How's uh how's uh uh what 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 did you Economics Yeah 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 Same I mean... old same old Well you How's know, junior year teaching you? That's uh that's economics for you. Enjoy the dance Oh you too Nice uh nice button Thanks Gotta okay. support local government yeah, maybe pretty soon you'll be teaching politics. Oh, the lift so dings. <laughs> <laughs> and as you walk out the front of um, the school, two RSF uh, speeders pull up with their, their lights. Uh, a large basilisk steps out of one, and out of the other one, a Snivian, a Miri Allen, and a species that you don't really recognize they're sort of turquoise colored with some head crests they step out of the second one and okay. the basilisk says um mr gregor you're, you're gonna have to come with me eddie gregor looks at them kind of surprised and then he tries to make a break for it and we get it we screen white thanks for listening to another episode of coruscant nights Coruscant Nights is a production of Nightcast Creative. For more information on this and our other projects, visit nightcastcreative.com. Thanks to Doug, Nikki, and Rill for playing on these episodes. If you're loving Coruscant Nights, be sure to leave us a review on your favorite podcatcher and visit us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Coruscant Nights.